Welcome to The Real Board Loft. I'm Trip Foreman, and today we have a great episode for you. We're gonna be featuring everything that you need to know about Grom boards, and uh, who better to share their information than Grom royalty? We got Mason Barley, Luke Lopez, Cash Suter, Alana Lopez, and Layla Lopez. So uh, first we're gonna dive into uh, the information or the lack of information that is out there on Grom boards. You can search all the way to the end every end of the internet right now and try and find information on ground boards and it's it's literally impossible if you don't have direct relation with like somebody who's right in it with ground boards it's almost impossible to find information out there so that's why uh when we had the unique opportunity where all these groms are here at the same time in cape hatteras we wanted to do a little interview and uh find out more about what they're riding how they got to what they're riding and also what they're working on uh, on their boards. As well, we're gonna look at uh, you know mistakes that they've made along the way, or even their friends have made along the way. You know, get some insight from these guys and girls and see where they see some people going wrong, where they could you know just turn a little bit and maybe choose a different board, a different size, and and make it a whole lot easier to surf and to surf at a higher level. So let's dig right in. We want to get into the stats. We want to talk about age, height, weight, and uh, the dimensions of what you're riding. Mason Barley, how old are you? Ten. And what's your height and weight? Um, I'm four seven and seventy one point some pounds. Four seven seventy one pounds. All right, what board are you riding? What? I uh, have the what? Uber driver four eight eighteen point five liters. Yep. Is that an Uber driver or an Uber Grom? Uber Grom driver. Uber Grom. All right. Four eight eighteen and a half liters. All right, and what, when you were starting out, uh, what soft top did you ride first? I don't know. Five, six, catch surf. All right, five, six, catch surf skipper? Yeah. All right, and uh, when did you know it was the right time to make the switch off the skipper to your first hardboard? It was one time when we were in Hawaii and my dad let me use one of his boards. I found out that I really liked the hardboard more than I liked the soft. It yeah. It's much easier to turn. Yeah. And when you switched to a hardboard, like when you ended up getting your own hardboard, like your first, like you know, PU poly board, what, what did you gain out of that? Going from a soft top to a to uh, something smaller. I gained. I was able to do my turns much easier than I was on the soft off top. Right. And I think what also helped was my dad put me on a couple of his boards for a while. So, right. Um, Rocket Redux. Yep, a small one, and, yeah. But I really liked it much more. And then that same year, or maybe a couple months after, I got my first custom board. Yeah. And I found it was a lot easier to ride that than the custom, than the other board. I think it was because the size. And then a couple months ago, I got the Uber ROM and I it was so much easier to turn than any of the other boards I had ridden before that. And I just really think this board is good for kids who are learning how to surf. Right. It's easy to turn, it's easy to duck dive. Uh, it's also easy to paddle. Yeah, it seems like it's got some built-in speed too, like you get up and it just starts flying yeah. down the line, yeah? Awesome. Yes. Thanks, Mason. All right, Luke, let's uh, let's dive into you. How old are you? I'm 11. You're 11, and uh, what's your height and weight? I'm 4'7", and I weigh 64 pounds. 64 pounds? All right, and what are you riding? What is this What is this board right here? This thing looks awesome. So I'm riding the Retro Tripper. All right, so Lost Retro Tripper, and what are the what's the dimensions on that board and the volume? It's a 4'4". Four, 4'4". Four. Four, four. 15.88 by two, and it's 15 and a quarter liters. Yes. And then you've got it set up as a thruster. Yeah. All right, how long have you had this board? A couple months. Couple months? Couple months. And uh, what do you like about that board compared to your last board that you had? This board's super fine because it can like go on rail really good. Yeah, so it's easier to easier to get on rail than your yeah. last board? Yeah. And did you go, did you change anything from your last board to this board? Did you go, like narrower or thinner, like less volume, or is it like 
just that it's a different model. It's all, it's a different model and it's also uh, a lot shorter than my other board, like my regular board. What, what's your regular board? It's a 4.6. Four 4.6, six. Four six, okay. Small. So a couple inches smaller? Yeah. And this thing's got a little bit more, like a little bit more nose area, right? Yeah. Like kind of... The nose is a lot wider. A lot wider? A lot wider. And what does that do for you compared to like a narrower nose? I don't know. It feels the same. Feels the same? Does it help you paddle any easier or like kind of go down the line any easier if there's a flat spot? Um, no, it's just the same. Just the same? Just it allows you to ride it shorter? Yeah. Okay. And then what, uh, what fins are you riding in this board? The Mayhem. The Mayhem? Not, not my oldest. And then what size? The Smalls. The Smalls. All right. FCS. All right. So we got this as a thruster with the Biola Smalls in it. And what, where's the best way that you've gotten on this board so far? Because I know that you, you and your family have been doing a ton of traveling this year. The best? Oh, best probably. single wave. Best single one. If you just had to pick one out of all the waves you've gotten, where's the best one? Endo. An Endo? Endo. What break? Uh, Lakey's. Yeah? Lakey's. Was it? And uh, tell, tell us about it. I kind of forgot what it, like, it barreled. Uh-huh. And then I came out just a big raft. Nice. We did a couple more rafts and then hit the clothes out. It was so fun. And just you closed it all down. It was you didn't leave anything on the table. No. Awesome. That's the way so to do fun. it. All right, Cass. Let's get into uh, what you got going on. Uh, first, let's talk about your age, your height, and your weight. I'm eleven, four nine, and seventy five pounds. Okay. All right. So we got four nine six four nine by sixteen and three quarters by two point one. 17.7 liters and this is uh what model is this driver 2.0 all right so this is uh you've been surfing the uber grom right and you still actually have one right you use yeah, it like in contests like small wave contest yeah, stuff it's tiny, I like it. okay and then this board you just added to mm -hmm. your quiver and uh why don't you tell us about like what you were looking for when you got this board versus the uber grom like what kind of performance and like kind of when does this thing come out of the truck and uh, into the lineup? When I got my Uber ground, that was my first lost board. Right. And then I got a couple other boards after that, but this one was, I was looking for another high performance board mm -hmm. and I saw this one and I, and I like it. It's kind of surfs the best when in mid like two to four foot range. And okay. then, but it works also really well. And, like four to six and so if you were comparing this to the uber grom like kind of like the feel that comes up to your feet like like how does this thing feel compared to the uber grom this board feels like it has a lot more drive and it's okay. a bit tighter on its rail okay but you can use the rail a lot more the uber grom since that it was a lot shorter yeah that was yeah. A four six yeah it it's like still pretty fast and it's loose, but it's loose and it has a ton of pop like a small wave for it okay yeah so you're still using you're still using that one right for for small waves and then you mm -hmm. step up to this like when it gets better yeah okay awesome and what did you ride uh for your first your first soft top like what were you out there riding i remember like when you were like maybe six years old you were learning five years old yeah I maybe even so. earlier than that but what were you riding what was your first soft top i never really actually soft top i just use bigger hard boards like my dad's okay boards. okay but i think the first one was like a five eight i think i remember i think that was a rusty toad yep right mm -hmm. that was a it was a it was an epoxy rusty toad like with like kind of a rounded nose mm -hmm. and a rounded tail yeah i remember that all right and then i just kind of got smaller and smaller boards and then I started riding like four sixes. Okay. Uh, and then I'm kind of going up there. All right. And what do you see, like if you, like you're in the lineup and you, you know, some of your friends are having a good time and maybe some of your friends are a little bit frustrated. Like, do you ever see, or, you know, have you ever made this mistake yourself? Like where maybe you went too small on the board too soon, or do you see people making that mistake or maybe getting off soft tops too soon? Yeah. I mean, I've, definitely gone too small on a board and mm -hmm. it just digs its rail and everything feels and it feels like you're sinking the entire time yeah and i think a bigger board is sometimes better right it's definitely better to go too big than too small 
definitely better to go too big than too small. And what yeah. what about like your wave count? Like if you go to a board that's too small, what happens there? Like with the number of waves you get in this session? It like doubles down. Um, it's Double, it goes down by two. Yeah. So you end up getting almost no waves. Yeah. So that's a good indication, yeah? Like if you're not catching any waves, maybe size up. Mm-hmm. All right, awesome. Well, thank you for that information. Let's move on to Alana, Alana Lopez. Let's start with your age, your height, and your weight. I am 13 years old. I am like, I think 80 pounds and I'm 5'1". All right, and what? why are you here this week? Because you're here for a contest this I'm week, right? I'm here for the WRV. Um, contest. And that's a WRV Pro? Yep. All right, awesome. And you had a heat, you had a heat yesterday, yeah? Yep. And how'd that go? I got second. Awesome, all right. And what, were you riding one of those boards that you're holding right there? Yeah, I was riding this Driver 2.0 that's a 5.0. All right, so let's talk about uh, that board. Uh, what are the dimensions on that board? Can you read them off the, uh, off the bottom? It's a 5.0, 16.3, 196. Yeah, 16, yeah, 16.3, six either 3.7 or 8.7 yeah. liters. So this thing is a chip. This thing is tiny. Yeah, it's really thin. And what is, uh, how were the waves yesterday? They were, they were pretty small, yeah? They were pretty small, but it was really dumpy. So, and I feel like in small, dumpy waves, I didn't really need to ride my Graveler. I could just ride a thinner board to help me maneuver it easier. Yeah. It was basically shore break. <laughs> And what, uh, now that you mentioned Groveler, like, is that what the Pink Panther is? Is that your Groveler? Yeah, it's a Groveler. It's also a Driver 2.0. I'm riding the same model, but it's a lot thicker through the nose and throughout the whole entire thing and a bit wider. So, like, through mushy sections, you could just kind of power through it. Okay. And let's take a look at the dimensions on that one. Flip that one over here. So, what is that? You got 411 and a half, 17.13, 2.15. And 18, well, 18.9 liters. So this one's got got some more foam to it. Yeah. So you've you've been at this a while. It's like if you're in the WRV Pro, you've been at this a while. Yeah. So what, when you're working on your boards, like with Matt and with your dad, like what what are you talking about? Like as you go from like your first hard board, like something like an Ubergrom, into like what you're riding right now. Like what like what are the sensations that you're feeling and like what are the improvements that you're looking for in your boards? So like when I first started off, I was probably like, I was, I had really big boards that were like probably like five, five boards, really thick and really wide when I was first got my first hard board. And then I gradually started getting like smaller boards. Like I think my smallest board is probably like a four, five and a half, I believe. Okay. And then I went up from there. So I kind of started on big boards, went down to small boards and up to big boards again. Back up to big boards. Yep. And then what is, so if we're looking at those two boards being like your grobbler and like your all around short board, do you have a step up? Uh, I do have a step up. It's not really that much taller than me. It's a pintail though. And I believe pintails help you in bigger waves. And it's a five two. Yep. And it's about the same volume as that, just more stretched out? I believe so, yeah. Okay, talk to us about some memorable, day, memorable days on that board. Like where have you been riding that board and get some good waves? Five. I rode it at Super Tubes in Portugal, and like it was really big out there and gnarly. But I wasn't exactly catching the biggest waves. I was kind of catching more of the shoulders. Right. But it still helps because it was still a big wave, and it definitely helped me like draw lines easier with the pintail. Nice, and just like be a little bit more neutral. Like, yeah. All right, not be racing, racing out and like bouncing out. Yeah. Awesome, Layla. From Layla's world. What do you got going on over there? How old are you? Um, I'm nine. You're nine? And what's your height and weight? Four, five, four. Four, five, 60 pounds? I don't really know. All right. And what do you got there? What's that board that you got there? Um, That's what you've been riding this uh, this trip to yeah. Cape Hatteras, yeah? The board's a four, six, um, 15.5, 188, and then 13.75 liters. It's a driver 2.0. And a driver 2.0. Mm -hmm. And what do you like about that board, Layla? I like that I can do a bunch of turns on it, and it's super easy to duck dive. So. And okay, so now that you mentioned duck diving, like when you go from a soft top to a hard board, is that like one of the things you can start doing? Like when you get rid of all that extra foam on the soft top? All right, so we'll talk about a person like a Layla's age. Um, I'm her father, Coy Lopez, and uh, she 
She's nine years old and she's been transitioning slowly from a soft top to a bigger hardboard. Now she's able, this is actually her brother's favorite board, which is really little. Uh, like I said, it's four six, it's like 13 something liters. It's tiny, but um, Luke's pretty advanced surfer so he can ride this. But someone like Layla, she does actually, she's been riding this board in this trip because her board's not here. So she does kind of struggle to catch waves on it, but like she said, it's really easy for her to duck dive. So there's always like a, you know, weighing the balance of what's better for a kid is do they enjoy paddling out and duck diving, getting out easier? Or the little bigger board that's easier to ride, but now they're getting smashed going out. So there's give or take with both those um, differences there. So with Layla, she does enjoy being able to paddle out, get out easy. Right. And she's out there more just having fun talking with her friends. She's not too worried about how many waves she catches at the moment. So if she catches like three waves, she's like, it was a great day. Right, yeah. right. Um, but when she rides her little bit bigger board, she catches way more waves. And if the day is right and the waves are small, it's still easy to get out. So it's all about your conditions and what you're looking for. So she's a, we kind of go back and forth between boards. If it's bigger, I do put her on a smaller board so she can paddle out, right. get out, duck dive easily. I know she's not gonna catch many waves, but even but smaller than that. No, this will be the smallest she's ever rode. Okay. She her okay. her board at home is a, is probably a liter more than this. Okay. Um, it's a four seven and it's about one liter more than this, and uh, it's a pretty good balance of both. It's right in the middle there. She can still duck dive it pretty well and, uh, and ride waves. So Corey, as uh as a dad and as a uh, like a mentor to the, to your kids and as a coach like how what sort of help like can you give to the audience as far as like mistakes that you see kids making or kind of the direction that you're kind of guiding your kids like with the with the boards you know it, there's no perfect science to it it's all trying we're all trying to figure it out right and it's a, it's a tough balance of figuring out what's the right height um, leaders i mean the leaders is a really important part of it so once you learn the leaders that your kids on and what's working for them at their skill level is where you start just building on that. Once you kind of get it down, then you're gonna go from there. So sometimes like you might not get that first board order perfect. You know, right. it's it's been hard. Oh, yeah. We've we've had a lot of trial and error with it, like Alana said. And um, but once you kind of find that board, like hey, here we are. We're at 16 liters, and my son's weighing in at you know 70 pounds or 65 pounds, and it seems to work pretty good in the, the happy medium. Um, of both worlds of duck diving and performance. Right, right. You know, um, and then you can kind of go there as your son keeps growing, or daughter, you know. Um, it's just finding a balance that works for you, but there's no perfect science to it. All my children all started on soft tops, you know, somewhere between a 5'2 and a 5'5, five five, and then they got bigger hard boards, and then as they progressed, you switch them to the hard boards and, and continue to get the boards. I just kept getting smaller and smaller and smaller before the kids got, you know, they got better. And right, right. Then they, then they start growing the boards. And then they start up. getting bigger. Yeah, Matt so, talked about that the last time. Uh, Matt Bilos talked about that the last time he was here, how it's like you got to get the boards big big enough to transition off of the soft tops because they don't have the, the, like, the mass and the muscle to, like, ride a little board. And so then they go down to, like, wanting a little board, and then they, that's when they actually hit their growth spurt, and then they start getting bigger, you know? So it's, like, bigger, and then smaller, and then bigger again. Yeah, and I think something that Cash said was, was really helpful, I think, for, for most parents probably, is that you'd rather have a board that's a little too big than too small, you know? Um, like, with Layla on this board, I know it's too small. I'm watching her struggle to catch waves. So you'd rather have the boards a little too big, I think, right. than too small, um, because your kids will have a lot more fun catching waves. They'll ride more waves. Okay. Um, so I thought that was a great thing that he said. Awesome. Brent, why don't you get in here? Brent Barley, uh, you know, you went through all these trans, you know, transitions yourself, like when you were growing up, and now uh, with Mason, your son, uh, at 10 years old, like kind of following in your footsteps and, and you know, going from soft top to, to the hard boards, you know, and, uh, and, and is surfing really progressing. What, you know, what sort of things did you do right and wrong, like in those transitions? that you're then passing your life lessons along to him and trying to make it an easier road. Yeah, um, I would say some of the things that I thought were most important that I messed up the most on was being on too small a board. Okay. So like what Cash said and what Corey was reiterating is that like it's more important to have more volume as they're learning and progressing than it is to have less, I think. And uh, that's why like for his size, I've been putting him on a little bit bigger board because you know he's only been riding a a board relatively his size for about a year. Right. So it's still kind of new. So like when he went to the Uber Grom, that this was Kosa's board. And okay. so, you know, for him to step up, like step down to a board that Kosa was stepping off of, like that seems like a huge difference. But ability wise, like I wanted him to be able to paddle and just catch a ton of waves because time on the waves is where he's going to learn. And so 
for me, when I was younger, I went like 5 15 inches wide at like 11 years old or something, and it was like so narrow. And the problem was for me, like I grew up from that, mm -hmm. and it honestly took me until I was like in my 20s to be like, oh shoot, I need to go wider. And like, I wouldn't listen to people because I could ride it. I could yeah. force it to do what it did. And to me, it was good, but I look back and I'm like, man, my surfing probably would have progressed better on a little bit more volume. And so I've focused on that for him. And then, you know, for him, he's like gonna be on a little bit bigger board than like some other kids his size. Yeah. They're a little older, more advanced, and, and that's okay. So I think like Corey said, it's gonna be different, like through kids, different stages. And you know, it's, there's no science to it. It's yeah. a matter of like kind of stumbling your way through and figuring it out as, as you go. So two things I want to focus on that you just said. One of them, you know, and the, the viewers, like it, it, it might have just went right past them in, <laughs> in you saying it. But like all these dimensions are like, you know, are gold, you know, because when you're when you're looking for your first ground board, you're not used to like four, seven, 16 inches wide, <laughs> one point nine, six, like, you know, especially if you're, you know, if you're an adult, you know, but the one thing that you said is uh, at his height. Like, he, like riding a board at his height. Yeah. And I think that's like something that can get parents like over the hump of like at least starting to look at like the right size boards, you know, like, okay, what's their height? Cause you know, most of their parents are gonna be, you know, five foot to six foot. And now all of a sudden you're looking at like four sixes, right? Four yeah. sevens, just because you're looking at their height. And it might seem like the most basic to a lot of viewers, but switching from a soft top that's a foot over his height by like super thick to that is gonna make a huge difference, yeah? Yeah. And then what about duck diving? We were talking over here, we were talking a little bit about duck diving and getting themselves out. Like, and now you're talking about trying to put Mason on the biggest, a little bit bigger board, right? Like, is, is there kind of some sort of duck dive ratio that you're looking for? Like, is it like the biggest board that he could still duck dive effectively? No, I mean, honestly, he he rode my boards for a while and he figured out how to duck dive like my small wave boards. Really? So then when he hopped on a smaller board, he he's never had a problem getting out. Paddling's probably his like, strongest suit so okay i mean around here you just yeah you gotta yeah. paddle a lot so he's taking him out last year when there was a ton of current and he's just he was handling it and so you know i was as long as he can paddle in that current and be able uh -huh. to catch waves without you know me needing to be by his side like you know whatever he can size down to to be able to still battle that current that's you know and so if he was riding your small wave boards uh like what was the volume on those those were like 20 five to 26 liters okay 25 mostly 25 liters okay and he just figured it out <laughs> how yeah, to, yeah, how to yeah. like get him under enough and like how to work you know it's not only just duck diving sometimes you can just bail and swim under waves to like get through the bigger ones yeah and so yeah it's, you know, it's not necessarily all board but like Corey's saying you know a smaller board you can duck dive easier and get out you're gonna have more opportunity than if you're just stuck on the inside so there's like that balance but it's gonna be different depending on each kid yeah yeah all right well don't, i mean i think it's helpful though too you know the that just again knowing like his height weight and like what he ended up being able to figure out how to duck dive yeah you know and, and make his way out there because a lot of times they focus too much on the duck diving and then all of a sudden the wave count is gone yeah. you know like <laughs> right. if it goes too small so we're gonna wrap this video up with some last tips from this uh, from this Grom gang we got here together today, and uh, we're going to start off with Layla uh, for the next generation behind you. So when you're 16, 17 years old, and there's like another gang of Groms your age, what sort of advice you want to pass down to them from what you've learned so far? If you wanted to throw them like one tip, like one one little tip that would help them out a lot, like what what would you say to them? For something for me, I just really want to focus on having fun because. If you're not having fun, what's the point of it? So, yeah. That's awesome. So yeah, Lay Layla said having fun, which is uh, which is always important. That's the reason that you're out there. I love it. Yeah. All right, Alana, what about you? Uh, soft tops. <laughs> They're super fun, even when you're good, like just to go goof around. But if you're just starting off and you like are starting to be able to turn the soft top, switch to a hardboard. If you're able to turn the soft top, you're gonna be good on a hardboard. That's a great, that's, that's a good, like... Some is a mistake that, like, some people make. Yeah? Yeah, that's great. So, like, if somebody's riding the soft top, they're turning it, now's the time to start thinking about, like, their first hardboard, yeah? All right, that's great. Awesome. Cash, what about you? What, what sort of tip you want to throw down for the next generation? Once you start getting better on bigger boards, kind of adding on to what Alana said, um, once you get started, 
start getting good on bigger boards, you can go smaller. Okay. And more high performance or narrow or whatever. Yeah. And but then you can start to build your way back up once you once you once they get too small. Once they get too small. Mm -hmm. And then hey, one thing I wanted to ask you, I thought would be a good question, is do you find any you need any size difference in your boards like when you go like to the full winter wetsuit like with five mil hood gloves boots because you're here all winter surfing yeah. all winter i yes definitely i think i wetsuits sometimes add like 10 pounds when you're having oh yeah five like the stuff. whole thing wetsuit mm -hmm. gloves and boots yeah yeah so i usually surf like a liter or two more in the winter yeah mm -hmm. And then if you're, especially if you're growing and then your board was already too small, then it's, it's going to be way too small if you got to put all that yeah. gear on, yeah? All right, awesome. Luke, the dude, Lopez, give us, give the next generation a tip. So, smaller boards are a lot harder to, like, paddle. Yeah. Because they're a lot shorter. And longer boards are a lot easier to, like, paddle in the waves. If it's, like, a big day, it's hard to, like, get into them. You gotta like get the bigger board so size up a little bit yeah and do you have uh do you ride this thing for everything or do you have a, a step up above that like to go to a bigger board if the waves are like clean but like big i'll ride this board like five six foot yeah I'll, like but clean like good i'll ride this board but if it's like really big i'll like ride my bigger board like my 410. Your 410? Yeah. All right. And Mason, what's your, when you're, when you're your dad's age and there's somebody like your age, what, what do you want to, what sort of uh, tip you want to throw down to that next grom? Um, it's definitely e easier. Like when you go from a soft top to a hard board, don't go like in the four foot range. You want to really go in like the five to six foot range just to get the feel. And then once you can really maneuver a bigger hardboard, you can start moving down to smaller boards. And so that, with those boards you're talking about, like some of your dad's boards that you rode? Yeah. Okay, awesome. Well, hey, I wanna thank all of you for uh, for sharing your time and like all of your experiences uh, with us. I think it's gonna be a huge benefit to, uh, to a lot of Groms out there and a lot of families. Um, also wanna take this opportunity to thank all the parents that are driving all these Groms to the beach every day and uh, to all the contests and on all the trips because they couldn't get into the lineup without you. Uh, if any of you out there have any questions about ground boards or would like to get a ground board, uh, order a ground board from our stock or custom order, you can always call us at the shop, 252-987-6000 or look us up online, realwatersports.com forward slash surfing. Thanks for tuning in.